Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWplans.com on Instagram, ERW underscore plans, on Etsy, ERWplans.etsy.com. You can also subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash ERWplans. Today, we're going to go over how to use your passion planner for personal growth. Passion Planner is set up really well for focusing on personal growth. There, it, every Passion Planner comes with a section on how to set your goals and then um, instructions on how to set up your life. I have stickered over that section because I needed to expand it a little tiny bit. And so what you'll see here is where there was the um, roadmap for the Passion Planner. Um, I've stickered over with my big dreams roadmap and my goal for the year roadmap, um, which are available in the Etsy shop. They look like this when they haven't been written all over. Um, but essentially what you want to do when you're starting off with personal growth is you really want to start off with a plan. What is your plan for this year? Where do you want to grow? How, how do you want to how do you want to see your life in the future? Um, the big dream sticker in the shop is set up for a six month goal, a one year goal, a five year goal, and your big dream. That's your like lifetime achievement goal. Um, and you can, I've used this for business planning in this case, but you can also see that I have some very personal stuff on there. Um, debt payoff, uh, write my novel, uh, weight, um, other personal things, uh, mental health, and so on. So you can use this, this goal, this mind map here to mind map out how you envision your life. Start with your biggest, I would say like your big goal here, something to inspire, quote, to inspire you, and then plan out in six months, I want to be here, one year, I want to be here, um, five years, lifetime. I like to plan this one backwards, and if you watch my video on setting up my uh, passion planner for, tw I think, 2019, 2020, definitely 2020 and 2021, I talk about doing this backwards. Start with your big dreams. Where do you want to ultimately end up in life? What is your big goal for your personal growth? Then go backwards five years. Where would you need to be in five years to meet this lifetime goal? From five years, go backwards again to one year. Where do you need to be in one year to achieve this personal goal? Then go back in six months. Where will I have to be to get to one year, to get to five years, to get to lifetime? That would be how I would use the roadmap. Then you get your goal for the year. You're going to pick your big personal goal for the year, stick it in the center, and then mind map out all the things that you need to do in order to achieve that goal. And do not worry about, is this too big? Is this too small? You just go ahead and do it. Um, this is, I also have a mid-year one. Uh, what I would recommend is when you do your goal for the year, map it out um, with a six month plan in mind so that your center goal here would be the same as your six month goal. And then mid year, you would put in your next six month goal, which would be your goal to get to here. And then just start mind mapping this out with all the things that you need to do to reach that goal. Um, there are other stickers that you can use to help you set up your goal for the year. Um, we have, Let me see here. Okay. There are other stickers that you can use to set up your goal for the year. There is a word of the year. Uh, this is my uh, year at a glance uh, sticker where you can put your vision for the year. How do you see yourself at the end of the year? Then break it down into 22 things to achieve before 2022. Or if you have an undated, you can do a 20 things to achieve this year. But you're going to take where you see yourself at the end of the year, break it down. And then that's where I choose my word of the year from. Every year when people are like, how do you choose a word of the year? 
um, I go by where my vision is and what I need to do to break it down. And there's usually a theme. Uh, this year's theme was um, perseverance because most of my goals have to do with things that I, you know, either procrastinate on or I get frustrated and give up on or I get into that anxiety funk. I don't know if anybody else gets the anxiety funk, as I call it, but it's like you're so overwhelmed. You have so much stuff to do that you just get paralyzed and you can't do anything. And, you know, these things happen to everybody. And so my what I was looking at when I was looking at my goals was my goals are basically to keep going, even when there's a setback, even if I have a month where I don't make my monthly sales goals, don't let that frustrate me. Don't let that set me down. Persevere. Keep going forward. Persist. Uh, I even put like my little quote for the year about nevertheless, she persisted as my uh, big goal to myself. So that's one sticker that you can use to help you set up if you don't want to do a roadmap. The other sticker I have, and this is what the blank roadmap looks like, um, is my goal for the year sticker. This sticker, it gives you a bit of a guided way to figure out your roadmap, so to speak, um, where you're just going to take an honest inventory. Who are you right now? Um, this is a great way if you don't know what your personal goal is. I mean, if you have a roadmap like this and you know what your goal is, that's great. But if you don't really know what your personal goal is, uh, if you, you have no idea where to start, this just seems really intimidating. Start here. Do an inventory of yourself. Where are you? Who are you? What do you like about yourself? What don't you like about yourself? And once you have this little inventory of who you are right now, what change would make the biggest impact on your life? What one thing could you change in your life this year over the next 12 months or next six months that would really make an impact in your life that would have the biggest positive net gain for you? Once you know what that is, I want you to come up with your why. Why do you want to do this? Why would this be a huge personal gain? Um, if it's uh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? If it's I want to go hiking um, the Appalachian Trail, why do you want, why would that be the biggest life changer in your life? Because you're going to put this in the front of your planner and you're going to come back to this every time you get stuck on that, that personal goal. Every time you feel like you've failed or you've fallen off the wagon or whatever it is, come back to your why. Why do I want this? And I want it to be a really strong statement. Like I want to um, go one entire year without drinking alcohol. Why do I want this? Because I want to be clear headed. I want to be around for my kids. I want to have a healthy liver, you know, make it a really strong statement. Like I want to live to be 60 or 70, you know, I don't want to die early, something, something that when you look at it, it's going to light a fire under you. And that is what you're going to put here. You're going to take all these three things and make that your SMART goal. A SMART goal, I've gone over this before in other videos, but I'll do it again, is a goal that is specific, measurable, actionable, relevant to where you want to be, and it is time bound. So you're going to be real specific about your goal. I want to lose 20 pounds, specific, you want to lose weight, measurable, you're going to lose 20 pounds, you can easily measure that on a scale, actionable, you can take actions to lose that 20 pounds, relevant, is it relevant to your why? I want to be healthy, I want to be able to hike up a mountain without getting winded, yep, that's super relevant, and time bound, I want to do that in the next six months, okay? So I want to lose 20 pounds in the next six months is your SMART goal, let's say. Habits to achieve my goal. This is what you would usually mind map out, but you can just use it, do this little thing here. What are the habits that you would need to do to make that goal? Make a plan for when you get off track. If your goal is to, let's say, finish up that degree you started 10 years ago and then you dropped out of college, why did you, you look at this, if I get off track, why did I drop out last time? What made me feel off track? How am I going to get back on track if that happens again? Um, to go back to the weight loss one, because that's a big one for me personally. Um, if I have a day where I have a really shitty day and I eat an entire angel food cake, 
or worse, I eat an entire pint of Ben and Jerry's because I've done that. <laughs> uh, half baked is a huge weakness of mine. Then what am I going to do to get back on track instead of just going, oh my God, woe is me. I totally fucked up my diet forever. I'm never going to gain 20 pounds. No, if you get off track, what are you going to say to yourself? What are you going to immediately do when you get off track? Um, so in the weight loss thing, when I get off track, I will be kind to myself. I will make sure to set a plan for the next day and meal plan it out so I know I'm eating healthy the next day. I will make a commitment to exercise the next day. Um, if we go back to the, like, let's say you want to give up alcohol. Um, if you get off track and you drink something, you will forgive yourself. I always make that the number one thing to put on here for anything where you get off track. If it's drop out of school, uh, have a binged food day, drink, or, you know, use a substance that you didn't intend to do. Forgive yourself is number one. And then I want you to make action steps. What are you going to do? And make sure you leave this space blank. When you have reached your goal, you can put a picture of yourself here of reaching that goal. Or you can put a picture of the reward you're going to give yourself when you have reached your goal. So if your goal is lose 20 pounds, a picture of the outfit you're going to buy yourself or the vacation you're going to take in your new bathing suit or whatever the uh, like fitness competition you're going to enter, the marathon you're going to run. Make it something that you can aspire to. Okay. Then once you have this, you can go back into your roadmap and you can go, okay, now I know this is my SMART goal. I'm gonna put it here and then map out all of the, of the steps you're gonna use to focus on these habits to achieve your goal, okay? So that's the basic planner setup for how to achieve your goals. The other way you can set up a planner and this could be an Amplify planner, passion planner, bullet journal, however, whatever kind of uh, journal you're gonna use or planner you're gonna use for your personal goals is set up a level 10 life goal. Uh, this is the sticker that's in Chelsea Brown's shop. That's chelseabrowndesigns.etsy.com. This is the level 10 life goal. Um, and with the exception of this little wheel here, I added myself as a separate sticker. Um, and then you just looked out, there's 10 different sections here. And you list out 10 goals in each section that will essentially get you to your ultimate goal in each section. Um, my sections are customized. You, I think, um, I forget there's a spirituality one that I took out. Uh, there's, I forget all of the goals that are set up in the original sticker design, but you'd set like my financial goal is to be, uh, to have a, uh, to get through my baby steps, my seven financial baby steps. So I just basically listed out my seven financial baby steps and then added a few at the bottom. Um, or actually I broke down my, my, I have my baby steps in here, but I also have my, uh, individual credit cards to pay off in here. Um, so you just take your main goal, break it down into 10 little goals and then keep track of them, um, as you check them off or color them in or whatever, as you do them so that every month you'll come back here and I am going to make a separate video, uh, in April about how to remember to check your back pages to keep yourself on track. But every month. When you're doing your monthly reflection, come in here first and check off everything that you did. You can also make sure that when you're doing something that's back here, you come back here and check it off. And you can do that. There's another sticker that Chelsea has in her shop that goes with this one. And for this one, you uh, would just put it in your monthly spread, put down what you're focusing on this month. And that way, as you're going through your monthly spread, you'll know, oh yeah, I totally checked that off. You can come back here and check it off. So that's the other way to set your planner up to reach your personal goals. Now, once you have set your planner up for these personal goals, you have to break your goal down into action steps, because if you're just setting goals and forgetting goals, you're not going to get very far with you know, th this is great if you map this out, but you got to remember to come back here and look at this every month. And there are a couple ways to do that. The way that passion planner tells you to achieve this goal is every month you're going to come into your planner in this section here and you're going to take one item from this mind map, the item that would make the biggest difference in your life. This is kind of what we did in the personal goal sticker. But from your yearly mind map of actions to get to your yearly goal, take this one action that would make the biggest difference in your life. Put it out here. 
mind map out all the tasks. You might have some of them mind mapped out here. Mind map out every single task that you can do to achieve that goal. Take that mind map and make those your priority or your game changer for each week. So if you have, let's, this one I think has four weeks in January, five weeks in January according to Passion Planner. So you're gonna take, you'd write out your goal here, create five little circles with five actionable tasks, break those down into even further actionable tasks. Then you take each one of the goals you've drawn out, put them in the priority section or the monthly goal in each week. And then what I like, what they tell you to do, if you're following the passion planner method is once you've put those there, you're going to further break it down into actionable steps for the week. So my monthly goal was broken down into, or my month, my yearly goals broken down into a monthly goal. I put my, and then the monthly goals broke down into a weekly goal. Here's my weekly goal, broken it out into seven steps, one for each day. And then I'm listing my step. I list my steps out here in the good things that happened each week section. They want you to kind of work out of here. That's fine if that works for you. You can list them out in seven steps here and then take your seven steps and add one to each single day of the week in your top priority section here. So if that was confusing and I know I talk fast, I'll go over it again. Your annual goal, take this, Break it down into, a, pick one of these, any one of these things, make it a monthly goal, go here. Monthly goal, mind map it out into however many weeks. So five action steps, let's say. You take one action step for week one, put it here, map that out, in, mind map that out into seven different tasks you can do to achieve the main goal for the week. When you have those seven, put them up here, one for each day. And then we map out all the steps you need to take that day to achieve that personal goal. That's one way to do it. Uh, you can also take your seven steps that you've mind mapped out, put them here. It's another way you can do it. Okay. Um, I like to create an action plan in the beginning of my, for my six months. So back to here. This is my six month goal. I mind map it out into my steps. I take my steps and create a list of sequential actions. So it becomes a timeline of action steps that I need to take. I will write them all out. So if it's lose 20 pounds, um, one of my steps might be uh, rejoin Weight Watchers. And then what do I need to do? I need to pick a plan. I need to go online, sign up. I need to go to my first meeting and weigh in. Then my next step, what's the next thing I need to do? I need to get rid of all the junk food in my house. So go through the cabinets, go through the fridge, go through the pantry, et cetera, et cetera. And you just map out your steps and all the little actions you need to take in each step and do it sequentially in your timeline. Then each week you go in, or I should say, let's start with each month. Each month you'd go in, break, you take that one action step that's next on your list break it down into all the little tiny actions, add the little tiny actions to your personal to-do list. Check them off as you do them each week. Okay. Um, this action plan also comes with a side that says creative cohort or the um, people and tools you will need to get these things done. Um, for example, the lose 20 pounds, if one of them is set go to Weight Watchers, then you would set up here um, Go to Weight Watchers, steps you need to do to sign up. Over here, who can help me with this? Well, the Weight Watchers leader or Weight Watchers coach, you can ask her or him after the meeting to help you come up with a personal plan or your personal trainer if you sign up for the online training. You could also put your tools that you need. You need your online account. You need your app. List out who and what you need to help you achieve all of these steps. Then when you're going through the month, or your, yeah, when you're going through your month in your personal projects, you can make this top priority here, tools to get, all the tools from here that you need, list them out here, people to connect with, all the people you need to connect with that have been listed out here, okay? To go along with the 
mid-year or annual action plan, there's also an action plan sticker in the shop that fits in the monthly section. Uh, you will set up your goal for the week. You will create a timeline of the goal for the week. So whatever step one is here, you're gonna break that, put that as your goal, break it down into your timeline, your chronological order of steps you need to take, make action steps for each of the steps in the timeline. So if on Monday, this says finish videos, what do I need to do to finish my videos? Block off the time, script the videos, get all my materials ready. There's a section for relationships. What do, who do you need to help you with this? If you need someone to help you, it also is something where you can list the tools you need to get. Like, okay, I need to go out and get like washi tape to do this video. And a dates started and completed. So that way you know when you've completed each goal, it's divided so that there are two goals, personal and a work goal, or if you have two separate goals that you're working on, maybe a health and fitness goal and a, you know, personal enrichment goal you can do those. So that's what that sticker would look like. It is in the shop. It is, the shop is again, erwplans.etsy.com. Something that is very important to do when you're planning is make sure you make these goals a habit. Um, and what I mean by that is that your goals need to be something where you can work on them each and every day in order to get to your goal. Um, for example, if your goal is in health and fitness uh, to lose 20 pounds, habits you might look at include logging all your meals. A habit you might look at includes um, maybe meditating every day to help you clear your mind and be more mindful, uh, might be exercising every day or every two days, maybe take 10,000 steps a day. Uh, there are a couple ways to track this you can use a habit tracker. Uh, the one here that I'm showing you is from Chelsea Brown's shop. You'd list out all the habits to help you reach that goal. And then you would just color these in as you worked on each habit. Another way to do that though, if you don't have a habit tracker in your planner, or you're not gonna set up a habit tracker in your planner, is to do a daily habit section at the top. I blocked off here uh, three hours, a half hour for each of the habits. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily gonna do those in that time period, but just to give me an idea of how much time I will need for the habits. Um, in this case, it was visualize and set my intention for the day, meditate, repeat my affirmation, read, write, and exercise are my habits that I was setting for my personal goal. And then as you go through each day, you just check off the ones that you've completed as you complete them. If you're going to go this method rather than the sticker method, I would write all of these out in the exact same area, the top, maybe in the middle, maybe at the bottom, but write all of these out when you set your week up so that as the week goes on, it is just a habit that you check them off as you go. You might even wanna set up your planner for the month that way if your habits are pertaining to a monthly goal rather than a weekly goal. Make sure you do this, you set these habits up at least for the week, if not for the month, so that at some point it's gonna become automatic. Uh, different schools of thought say it takes 28 days to make a habit, uh, some say 60 days to make a habit, um, some say 30 days to make a habit, but at the very least, if you do something every day for a week, it's going to be more likely that you will continue doing it the following week. So set your weekly habit up when you set up your planner before you start that week so it becomes automatically part of your checklist. You can also do that down here. Uh, you can see that I take the regular checklists like this and I divide them in half so I have double the amount of space. You could make your habits just something to check off every single day. Um, there are a total, if you divide it like this, there's 28. So that's four habits that you do daily that you'd be able to check off, okay? Um, so make sure you make it a habit, put the habit in your planner, check it off as you go. Whatever your habit is, in addition to tracking it every week, you wanna have a tracker in the back to help keep you mindful of your progress. It is very important to keep track of your progress. 
for me, for my financial goals, I had a financial goal sticker set up, which I will talk to you about in a video in two weeks to show you exactly how that works. Um, I also have a weight loss tracker since one of my goals is to lose weight this year. Every week after I weigh in at my meeting, I come in, I put my little dot on here and then I can have my little graph to show me my progress. Other trackers, if your personal goal is to write a novel, the writing tracker, the 30 day writing tracker, especially if you're doing NaNoWriMo, is excellent. Um, movies to watch, if you're educating yourself as a personal goal, whether that is to do, um, you know, a college class, get a certification, whatever your, you know, let's say educational personal goal is, uh, just to become more aware of issues in communities that you're not a part of. This is something that you can do to help you achieve that goal. Um, you can have in your movies to watch anything on any YouTube videos to watch. Um, you could make this any, uh, you know, creative live videos to watch, masterclass videos to watch, whatever on your given topic. Same thing with TV shows. If there's a documentary series that will help you with your learning, and I find that some documentaries are very helpful with my learning, you could put that here. We also have the books to read sticker, which is in my shop. And this is fantastic for me. Um, I actually, this is all the books that I wanna read for the year and I highlight them as I finish them. Uh, why I did my sheet this way is there's a section that says book club question mark. Um, and I use that instead of whether or not it's for a book club necessarily. Um, what is the goal that I'm trying to achieve here? Am I a certified professional photographer uh, certification? It, I have that marked out here. Um, my uh, photography business group has recommended books. I have those marked out here. I do this so that as I'm working toward my goal and I need education to get toward my goal, I can cross off the books that I've read. And as I'm recommended books to help me study, I can add those to my list and they can go anywhere. They don't have to be clustered together because then all I have to do is look for uh, what they're related to. Why am I reading this book? And I can then, you know, go, oh, okay. So this is a CPP book and maybe over here I have a CPP book. All right. So, um, and then I have as part of my goals, my when did I last? This is for a lot of different goals, but specifically for my get healthy goal, we have down here the doctors to see. Every time I see a doctor for a regular checkup, I'm gonna put the date here so I know, okay, yeah, I have seen my GP this year and gotten a checkup. I have seen my OBGYN. I have seen my ENT, actually, that should be for April. Um, my allergist, my dermatologist, I've seen all those. I know that I'm getting healthy. And if I'm like, oh, I feel really crappy and I felt really crappy for a while, I can go back here and say, oh, okay, last time I saw my doctor was like six months ago. Maybe I should make another appointment to check out what's going on. Um, it's a good thing to do if you ha get stalled on like weight loss. Like I was doing great, losing weight, losing weight. Oh no, I plateaued. When was the last time I checked in with my GP? Last year, oh, well maybe I should check in with my GP and see if they can take a look at like blood work and things to see if there is a reason other than my eating habits that I have plateaued. So those are some of the back pages that you might wanna consider um, in order to help you get to your personal goals. Finally, with your personal goals, you want to every month reflect on your personal goal and reform your personal goal. Uh, the passion planner is already set up to do that, help you do that. Each month, at the end of the month, there is a section for your monthly reflection. It has questions so that you can, you know, go through the last month, uh, gratitude, things to improve, how are you different from last month, less this month, um, review your planner and assess your priorities. Just go through, work the questions, answer the questions. Um, I personally found that these are very broad questions. They don't really help me with the way my brain works uh, for goal setting and goal planning. So in my shop, you will find these monthly review questions. Uh, it gives you a space for your most memorable moment. Um, and a space that will fit a um, HP sprocket print. 
So you can put a picture in because I'm a visual person or put like any kind of like clipping or a meme or whatever in here, describe what was going on. You have this month's triumphs went, went really well. Go back through your month and go, okay, yeah, I did this thing. I did this thing. These are the things I got done. I did really well on getting my tasks done on certain weeks. I lost weight. I, you know, didn't drink for 30 days, whatever it is. What did you do super well? And then look at your challenges. What didn't you do super well? Oops, I had, I went to have one cheat day and ended up having a cheat weekend, extended cheat weekend, like four days long. You know, what, not only what didn't go well, but why didn't it go well? Why did you have a Friday through Monday cheat day? <laughs> um, really dig in and analyze what went wrong and why it went wrong. And then once you've dug into that, take those challenges and what went wrong and why it went wrong and turn it into an action plan for the next month. Like, okay, I had a four day long cheat day because I was feeling really crappy and like something went horribly wrong. Like, oh no, I didn't make my sales goal or, oh, I got a bad review at work or, oh no, you know, my um, relative got ill or whatever. And then go, okay, I learned that I, an emotion, a trigger, a trigger for eating is emotions. How can I do something healthy with those emotions? And that's your lessons learned. Your game changer review is where you're going to look back at overall at that monthly goal that you set at the beginning of the month and say, okay, this is my big goal for the beginning of this month. How did it go overall? Is this still what I want to do? Ask yourself at the end of every month, is this goal that I set still the thing that I want to do? And if it's not, use this space to set a new goal for next month. If you've been working at your month, your yearly goal for like three months and you go, I'm getting nowhere, I'm spinning my tires, really dig in and analyze why am I spinning my tires? Why is it after three months of doing all these steps, it's not working for me? Take a look at that, really reflect on that, and then decide, are you going to make a new game changer goal? You could do that. I have a gratitude section because I think it's very important, especially for someone like me with anxiety and depression, to look back and find at least three things every month that went well and that you are grateful for, even if it's, well, I didn't die. <laughs> um, a, year ago, a year ago, I had COVID and I ended up with symptoms that lasted six months. So I don't know if that constitutes a long hauler or not. Uh, but for this year, for March, my my gratitude is I don't still have those problems. I, I am not a long, long hauler and I feel much better and I'm getting my life back on track. It, but back in like March of 2020, it was, I didn't die this month and that's still okay. Just one positive thing, because when you say positive things out loud, when you write positive things down, they stick in your brain. It, there's a psychology to that. Uh, finally, your stop, start, continue. Look at everything you've already done here. What are the habits? you need to stop doing? What are the things you need to, that you did that you shouldn't be doing anymore? What are some new habits or new tasks that you should do? And what do you need to continue? What did you do this month that worked and you want to keep going with it? Okay. Um, whether you're using this review or you're using the passion planner uh, review that comes with the planner, what you're going to do is then go back in to your annual goal, highlight the things you did that worked for you, the things that you accomplished. Um, take a look at what your next step is going to be. If you are using my design for your monthly review, that's your game changer review. Look at that. Did you decide on a new goal? Um, if you didn't accomplish your, if you did accomplish your goal, pick a new goal from here. If you didn't accomplish your goal, are you just going to carry that over, migrate it to the next month, or are you going to form a new goal? Figure that out up here. Take that and make that your goal in the beginning of the next month. And then once again, once you've set out your goal for the next month, mind map it out or do your action plan if you're using the action plan stickers and then go through and just like you did before, do your weekly. This is what I'm break it down into your weekly steps. Do your weekly, either do the weekly action plan like I showed you or do your weekly mind map and set it out in your today's focus section. Um, there's also Passion Planner on um, last year, I think came out with a free download you can get in their store and there's a link in the bio. 
and that's their weekly reflection because a lot of people had an issue with doing a monthly reflection you get to the end of the month and you're like i don't remember what i did like what did i do i don't i don't know like what what, what happened last month i don't really remember like what, what am i grateful for other than like not dying still having a job Fuck if i know so they have these weekly reflections i added in this planner four re weekly reflection pages into one month section so at the end of this month there's one two three four weeks that you can do one for each pages you can do one for each week um, and there's a separate video you can see on how to add four pages into each month of your planner um, this really breaks down the passion planner monthly reflection so this is a breakdown of these into weekly questions that you can ask yourself it also asks you how did you practice self-care this week um, what is keeping you motivated there's a few little differences but for the most part it is your monthly reflection from the passion planner broken down into a look at a more grant more granular detail so that you can reflect on the last week and then use that reflection to redo your game changer for the next week um, i also have in the shop this couple lines a day which functions kind of the same as the monthly ref as the weekly reflection pages except that for the couple lines a day this one you're just going to fill in like sunday this is how my day went one day this is good things and bad things that happened and then at the end of the month when you go to do your review you'll have all of those instead of flipping through all of these pages the biggest thing to do when you're using your personal goals in your passion planner is make sure you're consistent i've shown you a few different ways to set annual goals to set monthly goals how to reflect on those goals and how to move forward with those goals the biggest thing is figure out a system that works for you maybe none of these systems work for you i would love it if you left a comment telling me what system does work for you i, I think it'd be fantastic to uh, if you did a video and just tag me and show me how you set up your personal goals for the year, how you break them down, and how you follow through on them. What trackers work for you? What trackers would you like to see in the shop to help you with this? Um, but this is at least a way to get started. I know it can be very overwhelming when you get a brand new passion planner and you're like, I don't know where to start. Hopefully, even if you don't do my methods, even if you don't do the method that's in the passion planner and you create your whole own whole new thing, or you do a hybrid of my method and their method, I really hope that this will give you a little bit of um, inspiration to get started. And if there's anything that you would like me to break down into like a separate mini video, please let me know. I am more than happy to break down any one of these steps into a 10 or 15 minute video to help you, you know, really dig into goal setting uh, really dig into your monthly reviews, um, really dig into weekly planning. So let me know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like. Please make sure you share this video with your friends. And of course, click that subscribe button. New videos go up at 7 a.m. Mountain Time on Wednesdays. We also have videos that go up bi-monthly, sorry, we have videos that go up bi-weekly on the Patreon for only for patrons. When you subscribe to the Patreon, you help fund the tools and uh, I need to make these videos. Uh, unfortunately, I am not sponsored. There is no sponsored content on this. Um, everything that I buy, I pay with out of pocket. So when you become a patron, you that helps me not only pay for camera equipment and uh, lighting equipment, but it also helps me pay for the tools that I'm testing out in these videos. And as a thank you, you get two completely unique videos every month in the Patreon group. So become a patron. It's patreon.com slash ERW plans. As always, thank you guys again so much for watching and for your patronage and stick around for the next video.